Welcome to Viewing and Reviewing, where I pull older movies off the shelf, watch them, and let you know if I believe they're worth your time to watch or not. I'm Bobby T, your online video store clerk, and I'll be searching through my VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray collection to find titles that I think may be interesting to review. In today's episode, I'll be reviewing 1983's Blue Thunder, directed by John Badham and starring Roy Scheider, Warren Oates, Daniel Stern, and Malcolm McDowell. Please let me read you the DVD cover. Roy Scheider stars in this intense action thriller as a courageous police officer pilot battling government fanatics planning to misuse an experimental attack helicopter. Chosen to test Blue Thunder, Frank Murphy, Scheider, is amazed by the high-speed, high-tech chopper. It can see through walls, record a whisper, or level a city block. Distrusting the military ment mentality behind Blue Thunder, Murphy and his, his partner Lyman Good, Daniel Stern, soon discover that the remarkable craft is slated for use as the ultimate weapon in surveillance, surveillance and crowd control. Jeopardized after being discovered by sinister Colonel Cochran, Malcolm McDowell, Murphy flies Blue Thunder against military aircraft in a spellbinding contest over Los Angeles. Now, let's just take a second and admire the Blue Thunder helicopter in the trailer you're watching right now. It actually looks like something called Blue Thunder, doesn't it? I saw this film in the theater in 1983. It was my first R-rated film I legally saw when I turned 18. I remember thinking how cool Blue Thunder looked and sounded in theatrical stereoscopic sound. I think we've become spoiled a little bit by all the CGI spaceships and booming THX Dolby surround sound that shakes us out of our chairs, our chairs today. When I look at Blue Thunder on screen, it looks imposing. Roy Scheider was starting to look a little tired by this point in his career, which lent itself perfectly to the grizzled burnout Murphy that gets pushed over the edge by government bad guys, led by the ever-sneering, ultra-baddie Malcolm McDowell. I mean, how can you not loathe a mug that looks like that? I mean, you just want to wring his arrogant British nick. Daniel Stern playing Lyman Good, the newbie sky observer for Murphy, has a few technological tricks up his sleeve that was believable for his younger military trained character to be inquisitive enough in the dawning computer age. Warren Oates as the exhausted Astro Division captain was pitch perfect at chewing Murphy's and Lyman Good's asses for peeping into a foxy socialite's window as she does nude yoga while actual crimes were being committed on their watch. I always get a kick out of early 80s actors that tend to follow the rough script but have some personality when they deliver their lines. Scheider's beeper line was perfection. It felt less acting and more reacting off of each other, which was a really good thing. Now what people may not remember from that day was that the terrorists at the 1972 Olympics in Munich were still fresh on the minds of Olympic committees around the world. The 1984 Olympics were held in Los Angeles, so the plausibility that the LAPD and U.S. government would create such a high-performance weapon as Blue Thunder was not only appropriate, it would have been expected. But it's the fact that Blue Thunder actually looked like a weapon throughout the film is its best feature. Now don't get me wrong, the F-16s they used and a few other sequences were obvious green screened and they don't age well. But Blue Thunder and the smaller Defender chopper flown by Malcolm McDowell were real and, they, and watching them fly is an aviation aficionado's dream. So, my overall report card of the film, it looks like this. Does it stand the test of time? Well, kinda. I'll give this a B-. The movie looks dated in a whole lot of ways in acting, clothing, hairstyles, and music. That's not a bad thing, it just is. It's 1983. But, Blue Thunder is an A+. If I saw that Hellcat in the sky today, I would still believe that was an aircraft from the future. Now the story. I actually enjoyed the story. I'd give it a B+. An aging, troubled ace cop pilot is volunteered to test fly an experimental, highly lethal aircraft. During his maiden voyage, he realizes he's flying a weapon so advanced that, it falls, that if it falls into the hands of people with bad intentions, really bad things can happen. Cue the insane bad guy with a history of pissing off our lead actor. So the lead actor steals the invincible weapon and the chase is on all over downtown LA by cop cars, motorcycles, gunships, and F-16s. It's fairly standard stuff, but Blue Thunder has enough gadgets and gizmos that do such cool stuff that in 1983, we were really impressed. The cast. It's a good cast. I'd give this a B. Scheider basically plays Chief Brody from Jaws as a helicopter burnout. 
McDowell is always memorable as the crazy Brit that just seriously needs to get his ass kicked. Daniel Stern is surprisingly good as the gullible rookie that figures some of the really tough stuff out, but he only ends up roadkill in the end. And I believe Candy Clark as Scheider's girlfriend could have been played by pretty much any actress of her day, but she was fine. The rest of the cast was paint by numbers, which was fine. Cinematography. Well, it looks like 1983, but seeing the blue thunder silhouette for the first time in the distance, I mean, and pretty much any time that chopper was in the air, it deserves a solid B. The rest of the film is fairly standard Ponch and John Chips film uh, filming from that era, but it was appropriate for the day. The music. Honestly, it's a C. Whenever Blue Thunder was on screen, the sound was muscular and forbidding, but the rest of the soundtrack was very pedestrian. You won't remember the music once you turn off the DVD. So, overall, <laughs> believe it or not, I'd give this film a B-. The helicopter Blue Thunder is worth every second of screen time. It reminds me a lot of how the supercar in The Wraith dominates the screen every time you saw it. It's otherworldly and impressive. The rest of the story is fairly standard stuff, so don't go into it expecting to see crazy special effects and Oscar-winning performances. Everyone does their job for the early 80s, and an over-the-edge Scheider playing like Chief Brody from Jaws is always worth watching. The film is dated, but if you can get past that part, I think you'd enjoy the flight. So here are some recommendations along this same vein. Firefox, obvious with Clint Eastwood stealing a top secret, indestructible experimental aircraft from Russia that could cause some serious carnage if fallen into the wrong hands. And it is in Russian hands, so there we go. <laughs> Iron Eagle is the story of a high school kid who steals an F-16 along with a rogue Air Force colonel to try and rescue his father who's been wrongly accused of spying and sentenced to death in some nondescript Middle Eastern hellhole that just needs to get bombed because, well, it's the Middle East after all. And Broken Arrow. Terrorists steal nuclear warheads from a stealth bomber and don't expect to find resistance from a downed bomber pilot and a plucky park ranger to spoil their evil plans. As an aside, who the hell is in charge of aircraft security for all these kinds of films? I mean, maybe they should create a movie called Stolen Aircraft 101, Bathroom Breaks, On Duty Can Kill. Anyway, <laughs> well, that's it for Blue Thunder. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click the like button below. If you want to keep up to date on my future reviews, please click the, the subscribe button below. If you want to purchase Blue Thunder on DVD, or if you wish to purchase any of the other uh, titles that I've mentioned earlier, please follow the Amazon links below, and I'll get a small residual if you're so inclined. If you have any suggestions for movies you'd like me to review, please leave a comment below. I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be sure to help others in need, even if you get nothing in return. Have a great week.